This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Stress shows up in a lot of ways. Teeth grinding, digestive issues, lack of sleep, and more. Sound familiar? Visit betterhelp.com super and find out ways to lower your stress. Hey, brother. It is no secret that we absolutely love Encanto around here. And this past weekend, I was driving home from vacation with my wife where we got into a very interesting debate about the movie. The question is very simply, which member of the family Madrigal is actually the most powerful? because we've got quite the lineup of abilities. From communicating with animals to the ability to see the future or be able to hear something from over a mile away. It's a lot to consider. So we have to ask ourselves, if each of these characters were each given their own MCU origin story, if you will, which one would actually be the most useful? Some of these things are things that we're already used to seeing in this kind of movie, like Luisa's super strength, for example, or Camillo's ability to shapeshift. And there's a very obvious reason why we see these abilities over and over again. They're very easy to put to use quickly. That is as long as the situation calls for, you know, lifting something extremely heavy or maybe going undercover for some reason. But others are definitely more unique. Like Isabella has the ability to just manifest plant life at her fingertips. And sure, in the beginning, it's mostly just flowers, but by the end, it seems like it could be pretty much anything. How far could you take that? And so immediately it felt like you could make the argument for any character. Peppa, for example, can control the weather. That's pretty massive. But on the other hand, there is the occasional catch as well. Like again with Peppa, she can control the weather, but it's also impacted by her emotions. So in order to reach max power, she would need pretty strong mastery, like, over herself. And if somebody was able to figure out how to manipulate her, then that could get really dangerous really quickly. Then there's a character that we don't get a ton of time with, Mirabelle's mother, Julieta, who can effectively heal anything. And while that is maybe less of like an air quotes, fierce power, this is essentially the underlying objective of so many world leaders to, you know, provide health for everyone. Insert cynical comment here. But at some point we sort of need to answer a fairly deep question, which is what does it actually mean to be powerful? Deep stuff sometimes analyzing these Disney films. It's a hard job, but someone's got it. But so today we are going to rank each member of the family Madrigal from least to most powerful. Here we go. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Coming up with video ideas, writing and shooting, everything that you see that we place here on the channel is so much fun, but running the business end of it can be really hard. It constantly feels like you need to be in two different places at once at the same time. And if anything, sometimes it even feels like a relief if you only need to be in two places at once. And stamps.com does provide tremendous relief in that particular area because it provides one place you definitely don't need to be, which is the post office. Because it is quite literally the 24-7 an online post office that you can access anytime, anywhere. Having to drop what you're doing to run to the post office means we don't get to spend as much time doing what we love, which is making videos. And really it's stamps.com that gives us the ability to skip that headache entirely. Plus you have access to the post office and UPS right from your computer and get massive discounts up to 30% off of the USPS rates and up to 86% off of the UPS rates. This week, we have been working on sending out all of our perks for our Patreon page, and this helps so much. All you need is a regular computer and a printer, and you are up and running in just minutes. And it works seamlessly with Shopify, Etsy, eBay, and more. Plus, when you sign up with promo code SuperCarlin at stamps.com, you will get a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. There are no long-term commitments or contracts required. Simply go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter promo code SUPERCARLIN. Link is in the description down below. Okay, who is the most powerful member of the family Madrigal? Right out of the gate, I would like to define my personal parameters as to how I came up with my list. Because again, I think you could probably make arguments for just about any member of the family. There's such a wide variety of abilities here. And while some are really fun and exciting, it's hard to determine whether or not they're all that 
practical in the end. So my springboard for this argument actually launches off of Thanos from the MCU, because I think he places a very interesting lens over this conversation, both thanks to his actual raw power, but also his underlying motivations as to why he does what he does. For starters, pretty much all of the Avengers take a crack at him and none of them can stop him regardless of how powerful they are. But then, and also possibly more importantly, there are the underlying reasons behind his actions. Thanos was a really great villain because he has a sort of relatability to him, albeit is very much lacking in his justifications. But at the end of the day, he isn't seeking like personal glory or some kind of magnificent throne to rest upon. His argument is actually fairly simple. 20 miles, not enough to go around. His answer to this problem is to eliminate 50% of everyone, randomly. Random, just passionate, fair to rich and poor alike. It's an absolutely splendid plan, as long as you don't value preservation of life, which we do. I recap all of this to illustrate what I see as power. The thing that I guess would hope resides at the bottom of everyone's motivations who have ever sought it, which flat out and most simply isn't necessarily the ability to overcome evil, but rather instead the ability to help out the most number of people the most effectively. And with the very important caveat of not needing 50% of them to disappear, I can't stress that part enough. So those are the rules. What is the power in who and how can it help? So let's dive right on in with number eight, the not so mean green future seeing machine, Bruno. Immediately, I know what every single person is thinking. Bruno is last? He can literally see the future. And honestly, I hear you. That ability is extremely powerful. Although in many ways is also completely and utterly useless. Sorry. Here's the thing seeing the future prophecies, etc. These are big. They drive the plot in so many stories. In Harry Potter, the prophecy is pretty dang important, but at the end of the day, it's not the prophecy itself that is exceptionally dangerous. It really comes down to the person who is attempting to do something with it. So he was even less dangerous as the person who gave the prophecy. Am I right? <laughs> And again, our starting point must be, what is the power and how can it actually help people? Because I think at the end of the day, the answer to that question is that it doesn't really help anything at all. Because at the end of the day, the future is the future is the future. It is what it is. A fixed point of knowledge that becomes lobbed out into the future. It can be good or it can be bad, but regardless, it will be. And knowing it doesn't do anything about our ability to change it. The movie itself, I think, even aligns with my thinking here. The townspeople get really annoyed with Bruno for all of his predictions. Things like a fish would die, or you might lose your hair, or grow a gut. They blame Bruno for these things, but it's important to remember he's not the one making them happen. He's just informing people that they will happen, which is maybe not that nice, but still. You see what I mean? Time is like a sandwich. If all you have is the present and the future, then all you have is bread, and bread isn't a sandwich. Wait, but then also, what is the past in this analogy? The plate? I think I'm lost. Which feels like a fabulous time to move on to a number seven, Camillo and his fabulous shape-shifting abilities. Which to be absolutely fair, within the superhero genre, the ability to change your physical appearance can be a massively useful thing. The original X-Men trilogy, for example, essentially relied on Mystique for everything. But I'm gonna be honest with you, in this small town in the foothills of Columbia, I think even the movie had a hard time selling this as an ability. Or at least it really had to get creative coming up with ways to show you how this was beneficial to, you know, the community. Like, hey, I can watch your child literally as you, perfect babysitter. Or, 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 stick with me now, I could greet you as you. What greater way to feel welcome somewhere? No, not that useful. Okay, how about this? How about this? The ability to get seconds Huh? Extra food, extra serving by impersonating your sibling. Woo! What do you mean that doesn't help you or anyone else at all? 
selfish much. The thing is though, if we do go back to an example like the X-Men, the ability to go undercover or impersonate someone else so that you can, you know, get past security or gain extra power, that becomes incredibly useful as a member to a team that is otherwise trying to do good in the world. But in a very practical sense, and especially if you're trying to literally better the world, it's hard to figure out how others can actually benefit from it, especially on a larger scale. Which is a caveat that I will say will spread up on more than one occasion, but in the meantime, let's move on to number six. The one, the only, Ace Vantonio Pet Detective. I was really proud of that, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I thought I was, I was, pretty, I was pretty excited that it came together, yeah. We, of course, get to see Antonio get his power, which is the ability to speak to animals. And I do hear immediately what you're all thinking, which is that the ability to speak whale pays dividends. Well, you know, I speak whale. And this has been factually proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. We're in a whale, don't you get it? However, there are not whales everywhere, unfortunately. In which case, Antonio would absolutely crack the top three on this list. Go whales. Here is my argument as to why the ability to speak to animals might not be as useful as it may seem. I'm not even sure if it immediately seems useful, but at least according to Encanto, Antonio's ability to speak to animals also seems to come with this conclusion that animals would be willing to listen. I told them to warm up your seat. I tend to think that this feels a little bit optimistic. And I say that because we humans already have the ability to communicate with each other. And just because we can communicate with each other does not mean that we are always willing to listen. So adding a huge variety of other species into this equation, all of whom would likely have priorities of their own. And you mean to tell me that we only have the one human who is capable of communicating with, with all of them. Alrighty then. From there though, let's move on to the middle tier of powers with number five. And I have to admit that it pains me to say this because this is one of my all time favorite characters, Louisa. Okay. I know, I know, I know. Like super strength is just absolutely paramount in the world of superhero dumb. And near as I can tell, Louisa might not just have super strength, but quite literally the ability to just lift anything. You know, donkeys, bridges, mountains. I mean, the sky is the actual literal limit here. And so I will gladly admit that there are very significant and important uses for this kind of strength. But because that is true, we as humans have also done a huge amount of innovating to solve that very problem. Like, you know what's almost as good as someone who is strong as an ox? An ox, as powerful as a bulldozer, an actual bulldozer. And now I do want to be super fair because someone who is as smart and nimble as a human being with the same strength as those things has got to have applications beyond what I can even imagine. However, once again, we find ourselves with that kind of scalability problem. How many people can we actually help? Drive down any interstate at any point in time and you will likely see dozens, if not hundreds of pieces of heavy machinery. And that's just one road in one place. And the world is quite literally covered covered with roads with thousands of more pieces of heavy machinery. And that's just roads. It's not counting buildings or mining or any of the other numerous locations where you might need something that's incredibly strong. And once again, Louisa is just simply the one person and just cannot be everywhere all at once. Plus, if I know Louisa like I think I do, it would be a mighty burden to not be able to help everywhere that needs her. And I'd hate to put that on. I will say though, I bet she could TKO Thanos with a single punch. And that does bring me joy. That said though, that'll bring us to number four with supersonic hearing and Dolores. Dolores can hear a chorus a mile away or an eye twitching in another room or, you know, the sad sounds of her forgotten uncle who is living inside of the walls reenacting telenovelas with, you know, rats. I'm Jorge, I made the spackle. All normal stuff. You know, Dolores' ability for supersonic hearing, I think is very similar to her brother Camillo's ability to shapeshift. It's incredibly useful if implemented as part of a team. Again, let's imagine you're trying to overcome evil of some kind. The ability to gain intel through this ability would be incredibly beneficial because at the end of the day, knowing someone else's strategy is easily the fastest and best way to beat them at whatever it is. Famously on the TV show of Survivor, there are two players who have actually won 
won the entire game twice, and they both used the same tactic both times sleuthing. In some cases, literally burying themselves near a well of water just in hopes of overhearing something when someone else comes by. So while Dolores again has some of those scalability problems similar to Luisa, I do think that you're able to take her abilities and especially apply them to something like national defense. Or for that matter, she could just quite literally serve as a mediator between two nations because she can quite literally know what both parties are saying behind closed doors. I think she can do a lot towards achieving world peace. And so in my opinion, that makes her pretty dang powerful, but not quite as powerful as this list number three, who I would make a firm argument for the possibility of being number one, if not for one small caveat. It's Peppa. Peppa is a really unique case when it comes to how her ability works, which is of course to control the weather. Again, if we toss back to other examples of hero dumb, we know that this ability is a pretty big one. Storm from the X-Men, who essentially has the exact same powers, and Thor, the god of thunder, are both extremely OP characters in their own right. So the ability to control the weather, especially in the ways that it seems like Peppa is capable of doing it, could do things like you know, solve climate change or, you know, ensure ideal growing seasons for farmers, protect endangered species, even combat or just literally stop natural disasters altogether. On the whole, this one is huge. And really the only thing holding her back at all is the fact that her abilities are in a way affected by her own emotions. This hitch, if you will, of her emotions affecting the weather for all of humankind does kind of come with a sense of liability to it. And it is made pretty clear throughout the entire movie that this is a little bit of a struggle for this particular character. But also, rightly so, she is a human being and absolutely entitled to her emotions, both good and bad. Just also would, you know, uniquely have some more impact if she were to experience loss or have her heart broken. Looking at you, Felix, no pressure. Well, not no pressure. I mean, you got this, just don't mess it up. I feel as though I've said too much. Probably make you worse. So no better time to simply move on to number two. And I have to tell you guys at this point in time, I am quite literally splitting hairs because our final two candidates are incredibly strong. But in the runner up spot, I'm going to place Mirabelle's mother, Julieta. It might be shocking to hear her rank so highly on this list, but what she is capable of is so powerful that I actually think it would be sought out by supervillains the world over. Her ability is fairly unique, at least when it comes to the process of how it works, but she can essentially heal anyone of anything with her cooking. And I will say that I think the only thing that really held her back from the top spot here is that I don't totally know how it works. Like what technically counts as something that she has cooked and thereby has been imbued with the healing powers. In the movie, we see her use what is already a fairly simple Colombian dish known as arepas. So once again, you kind of find yourself in that question of scalability. How many of those could she make? And therefore how many people on the planet could she potentially heal? Like if she worked all day and all night, she could absolutely make a ton of these, but 7 billion people on the planet is still a lot of people. So if she were to run a factory, let's say, where she makes thousands upon thousands of these every single day, does that still count because she's overseeing the process? Or does she actually need to individually craft every single one? Because then again, that could take a long time. And then if you wanted to take it one step further from that, like what happens if she makes an entire vat of rice? Does each individual grain of rice count as something that she has then cooked? Because if so, then you'd be able to take one of the most plentiful crops on the entire planet and make massive batches all at once. And at that rate, it is literally Really conceivable that you could cook a grain of rice for every single person on planet Earth. And that is power. Actually, on this note, while I was researching for this video, I found a really fascinating art exhibit by a group called Stan's Cafe out of the UK. Their exhibit did exactly this. They would have these huge piles of rice where each individual grain represented a citizen from that respective country. So this huge mound here represents the United States. That's over 330 million grains of rice. Pretty cool, right? But I also think this is a really great note to move on to our final and most powerful member of 
the family Madrigal. Isabella! As I've said, our top three are all extremely capable when it comes down to what they're capable of doing for the world, but Isabella is truly no joke. At the beginning of her story, we know that she is capable of essentially producing an, an unlimited number of flowers, which while absolutely beautiful, and in some cases I'm sure are edible as some flowers are, this doesn't exactly immediately register as, you know, overpowered. However, by the end, she is literally capable of setting her will to grow anything. Cactuses, trees, carnivorous plants, like seriously, Sabella, what else can you do? Because again, on a global scale, it seems like she could just immediately regrow forests. She could ensure healthy crops the world over and provide habitats for animals everywhere. She really hits both environmental and humanitarian projects extremely well. Like the ability to just instantly grow a massive forest can massively offset carbon emissions and the ability to grow healthy crops anywhere could effectively just solve world hunger. And for that matter, and I know that I haven't looked at any of the other characters through the lens of like what they would be capable of in combat, hers is also still really cool. Like for all intents and purposes, her ability to, you know, control vines that she can just instantly create at will are not that different at all from telekinetic powers, which is constantly classified as one of the most dangerous and powerful skills that you can be given. But I have to say the icing on the cake is just the simple fact that basically anything Groot can do, she can also do. And boom, there you go guys, the powers from Encanto reign. And if the MCU wants to give each of these characters their own live action origin story, I am completely here for it. For my question of the day though, what do you guys think? Did I miss an obvious argument anywhere? Or is there someone who you think ranks a lot higher or a lot lower than where I place them? Let me know in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to find out why the color of Bruno's cloak is so very interesting, be sure to check out this video right over here. But otherwise, until next time, bye.